the Apostle Paul wrote, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. reveal to us that our God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away good morning my name is Pastor Forrest Parkinson. I am the pastor of the Community Church of Syasa. And it's been my privilege to get to know Athena and Tony and uh, Andrew. And I see some of your folks this morning. And I know that the good life that we enjoy has been greatly contributed to or mother, grandmother, and let us join our voices together. pray together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will the words of the sage and the wisdom of Ecclesiastes. 
I have seen the burden God has laid upon the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet, no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. May God bless this reading and the hearing of Holy Scripture to our understanding. We're told that due to some of the constraints of time that the uh, reading of memories and the sharing of memories will happen a little bit later at the, at the luncheon. So I do hope that everyone will have a chance to, uh, to share, share the personal memories, the, the, the meaningful experiences, uh, the blessing that Lucille has been in your lives together at that time. Uh, sorry to say that I didn't know Lucille, but from what, what by all accounts, she was an amazing and delightful person. But I would speak to you about trust age tells us that God set eternity in our hearts. And our loving God will do for us as a blessing. There is the wonderful charge from generations of Christian traditions. Friends, Ties of friendship and affection that knit us together in our lives do not unravel with death, but are glorified in the resurrection. ties of friendship and affection which knit us together in our lives do not unravel with death. They glorify in the resurrection of Christ. Right now, I am sure that everyone is either feeling or loves someone who is feeling. This life of love that Lucille knit amongst you Faith asks us to trust that while it is changed, it does not unravel, not undone. The stitches of love that our lives create weave us into the great fabric of eternity. We're together in this. We're connected. We are folded one upon the other. Yes, with life there is death. And that changes. But not everything. If you believe with me, which you do, call you to faith, if you believe with me, that love 
love is the life of God. That the love that you share with one another, the devotion that you have for one another, the way that you live with care and connection, with mercy, with kindness, with strength, with energy, your love, that that is part of God's life in you. Part of God's life for the one you love. You are all connected into God's life. Jesus taught us this. And what God has set into eternity, for Jesus said, I will lose nothing of what he's given to me. Nothing of what's bound up. God forgets his own life. Rather, the lives that we have are woven into eternity in such a way that God does more than remember it. God engages our lives forever. We cannot be lost. We're conserved, preserved, and more than just a static history or memory. Really, such is the power of God's love for us, intention for us, consciousness of us, and eternity that we share it. Faith that is sealed and joins in that loving care. So, you know, when you think long devotion that she had mm -hmm. to him. Her love was not lost. Nor was his service in the war lost. You can still see the legacy of it in the service of the family. That the joy that she took in oh, everything from watching television and going shopping and enjoying the good things of life, right? You know, she, she enjoyed it. She embraced it. Loving her with that, even if maybe it was over the top. And we believe that God's love for us is over the top too. We're filled with a God who loves us forever and loses nothing of us. That we are preserved, glorified, <laughs> forgiven, made whole and perfect. Can you believe to seal his love? Preserved, glorified, made perfect. In our lives, the opportunity to be devoted. I know uh, you have two daughters. There's much to her making her life better, caring for her in the last years of her life. That devotion <coughs> must be an example of love that marks us all lives that her grandchildren are living must be marked that love on to eternity. We can rejoice in that. We can live it. And we can live out in that legacy. There's a beautiful old story in a little church not too far from Originally, it was a bungalow colony built in the 1920s, and people would come out for the summer from the city. But over the years, they built it up, built up the community, and went from summer houses to year-round houses. But the church was in a tent. Every summer, they took up collections. Every winter, they took up collections for those who showed. The 
saved him. I and they built a beautiful new church. Right next to the tank. The children would talk about their memories of playing under its flaps, being protected by the sun and the rain. When it came time to dedicate the new church, they pulled it up, that old tank. placed it under the altar of the new. They were created and formed and given life and something temporary. <coughs> but the gift of that life became something that would last. And so you have grown up under the tent of Lucille's love. carefully and lovingly dedicate her remains with honor to the elements, trust in a mansion eternal prepared for her and our loving God that we will worship and love each other together forever. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught us, as perhaps Lucille taught some of you, the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister and the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Lucille, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Before we take our leave for the cemetery, I'm going to invite everybody up to pay their final respects here in the funeral home. After you pay your respects, I ask you to kindly go directly to your cars if you're driving a private